Alrighty, welcome back to the grand finals of the first ever Manifold TCG Player Appreciation Open held at Aegis Games in Bellingham, Washington here. I'm Alex, I'm joined. Adam. Love it, <laughs> we are so excited. This is the grand finals, the first ever finals for... A, a manifold big, a big event, manifold a big manifold yeah. event. So we've this done is, like we've done like you know like Friday night manifold and stuff a bunch of times, but never a cash prize, big final stream you know thing. There's a so, hundred dollars cash for yeah. first place of this tournament, so the winner of this game is getting a hundred dollars. Fresh yeah. Benjamin, that's I mean, we're, awesome. We're, we're starting. We're we're already going. Yeah, and we are getting right into it. And Stephen actually won the die roll here, and his first action just roll a couple dice, and now yep. he's just passing. So yep. we. we Awesomely enough, we actually had Noble's insight into this match the first time, so we, we actually really have a good idea of what he's looking for, how he's trying to play the match, and whatnot, and what really worked well for him in that first match here. Yeah. So we saw Steven doing a lot of just passing, and as a reminder here for people, Steven's deck, the only deck in the room that has no interest in killing their opponent's heroes. So how does it win? Great question, Adam. <laughs> Steven will win the game by first discarding his opponent's entire deck yep. using the effect of Anya and various other s events in his deck. After that, he's going to rend every last card in Noble's hand. Mm -hmm. And then, and only then, when Noble has no cards in his deck and no cards in his hand, does he lose the game yep. uh, due to having no more resources. So... That is Steven's plan, and in order to enable this, his deck is all events yep. that are going to be triggering his Anya, they're all going mostly to interact, removal. mostly removal, they're going to interact with the things Noble is trying to do, and because of that, Steven's not going to do anything proactive the whole game. He's just going yep. to pass, 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 remove until something. it is the right time yeah. for him to point a removal spell at something. Or he's going to play Scepter of Hindrance because the card's good. The card is really good, yeah. Yeah, so here's a... Here's a little bit of the setup that Steven is willing to commit yeah, in we, his deck. I believe he has, like, two objects that roll die. Like, he has, like, or he has, like, one ritual circle and two scepter of hindrance, and then a bunch of removal, or something something along those lines. Along so this those is lines. one of those. And do you want to talk about why maybe scepter of hindrance is the card that made yeah. the cut here? So, um, something about Manifold, like, like Alex said, you need to have no cards in hand or deck in order to lose. It's not like a lot of other games where, like, if you would draw and can't, you lose, or whatever. Which means, if you are discarding your whole, your opponent's whole deck, you need to also discard their whole hand. And the main way, there's a couple cards that like um, like invoke cowardice that, that um, he's playing three of. Um, uh, there we are. Um, that says rend one or deal four damage to support attachment or theory. It's, it's removal, but also it says they discard a card. And Anya can, you, you can or um, uh, Starlet, I mean, uh, said you can... Anya or Starlet? It's... Uh, uh, <laughs> one of his... There we go. Uh, um, there, uh, what, it, what is it? There's a loop that, that Steven can pull off that lets him get Invoke Cowardice back and then play it every round. And so, by doing so, he can rend out your whole hand. You can also, in this case, play Scepter of Hindrance, rolls Yellow Dice, Yellow Dice says rend two on it, he can just get there doing that. Yeah, exactly. That and was a very long answer for a very short question. No, but it's but, a very important yeah. answer because... Uh, <sighs> It removal, removal, dice removal, removal, board wipe, board wipe, removal, removal. Great. Yeah, so now Noble knows what he's up against. Uh, he probably already did, yes. to be honest. <laughs> so on the left there, we see two examine the specimens. And something that, that Noble noted when he won, when he beat Steven, the, something he, that he said was the biggest difference, or the, the reason that he won, was because Steven didn't draw many... Uh, Two for one removal spells like like uh, examine the specimens is or cheap removal spells like excommunicatus or something or witch fire yeah. or witch fire and so two examine the specimens in Stephen hands right now is very bad for noble yeah and the two devastating wakes there yes. as well I mean that noble's plan this is honestly one of the best hands he could have put together against noble it's really good yeah I think it's really good it's it's like a little expensive I think if he sure. could swap one or two of those cards out for like an excommunicatus and a witch fire he yeah, probably sure. would yeah but it's exceptionally good it's so good at dealing with one card or a thing if noble tries to stack a bunch of things to play around the devastating wakes then yeah. you're gonna clean up everything he yep. has a lot of answers to just deal with the one big thing he, he has, has a couple destroy effects exactly shields exactly he's got a few uh little small right we talked about the uh 
card that's going to do three damage divided. Uh, yeah. That I'm blanking on the name on, if you'll remember. Uh, examine the specimens. Quick. Examine the specimens. Thank you very much. Examine the specimens is so good. It puts your opponent in such a bind when they you know they have examined the specimens and a board wipe because yeah. normally you just play like one decent thing like maybe you'd pay a three durability guy mm -hmm. character and just try to trade it with the examine the specimens but you know steven has single target removal yep. maybe you play a couple small dudes to try to bait the board wipe but steven just examined the specimens maybe you play three dudes and now he just board wipes yeah and exactly get owned. yeah so it's so a i pinch. think i think noble's gonna need to Re be really, really uh, conservative about how he deploys his cards because every card is going to matter. Notice right here, Noble is... He played a one-cost servo, surveillance drone, look at your opponent's hand, rolls a black dice, Scrappy's going to put a white counter on it, and I think we're good. I think that's all Noble's going to commit to the board for, like, a while. Yeah, he, notably, he... Put the counter onto the surveillance drone with the Scrappy, and yep. then activated the Scrappy before he activated his Jollia. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that Jollia puts a counter on the already activated surveillance no, drone. No, I don't think he's ever putting a counter on. He's just rolling green, green, white, and just Or we're just going to use the dice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that too, yeah. which actually, honestly, is a much better plan, I think. That, that's an even better idea. It's yeah. just... And it's continued training at the beginning of the game, by the way, put a black counter on... Um, at the very start, what we almost what we missed in talking about, Noble Play continued training, putting a black counter on Scrappy, and it immediately got answered by a Sever the Ties. And so that black counter on Scrappy matters. Yeah. Because Noble will be rolling that black dice like six or seven times, and yeah. that, that'll be Steven four will never damage kill or Scrappy. something that matters. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, Steven can't kill heroes. He can kill attachments... But he can't take dice counters off of heroes. And so any way Noble can to put dice counters on heroes, he's going to take. If he plays like a, um, a prolific tutor, the first thing he's doing is taking that white counter off of surveillance drone, sticking it on one of his heroes. Lapping it on a hero. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. He won't. And so I think we're going to see, right, we just talked about how awkward of a situation Noble is in with the cards in his hand compared to Steven's. So I think we're going to see Noble really look to... The dice. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be the part where Steven is going to have a little bit more trouble interacting because we saw so much removal for characters in Steven's hand, but we didn't actually see a lot of the like diplomatic meeting he has one. type he, cards. He, he, there was he one has one, yeah. but one is not, you know, like, he has oh, seven yeah. pieces of removal for characters, whereas, you know, if Noble just activates his know. heroes and rolls Noble's more dice. rolling black, 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 white. Like, he's rolling a bunch of dice that only would ever have one damage on them. Steven really doesn't want to spend his diplomatic... Um, uh, meeting, yeah, getting rid of still feels one like damage sides. Yeah, he still has to though. Yeah, I agree. Um, which you know, I think this is well played from Noble. He's yeah. he's successfully realizing that his avenue to win is probably not the cards in his hand, yeah. and is the dice he has already in play. He can. Yeah. He's I think correctly recognizing that Steven's a little light on interaction for the dice he is rolling, yeah. and his clock, even if it's not that fast. Uh, as long as it's protected and he's not over committing, you know, as long as this clock is consistent, which I think it is, I think he's going to be able to race this, yeah. even if it takes a little bit of time. Um, so Diplomatic Meeting is the card that Steven's resolving right now. That's why he's messing with Noble's dice. Reroll any one dice, blank any one dice, sabotage. Yeah. yeah. Really so, phenomenal dice interaction card. This one card of the is premium so good cards. when you hit their two damage side and turn it blank, and then blank another two damage side, and then sabotage another two damage side. It's so much worse when you're, like, <laughs> blanking a black dice and then removing a white dice or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is exactly what Steven did. And so Noble forcing that just by playing a bunch of crappy little guys that roll a bunch of one damage dice that aren't fun to interact with. Because, like, Steven's just going to play uh, Devastating Wake, right? Right here? Yeah, it seems likely. He he's he probably kinda has to. Yeah. I, I would imagine. Um notably, you know, we, we saw Noble mention before that he was like, you know, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass, I'm gonna pass. He's like, No, I'm gonna wait for you to ping off my shield before I play Devastating Way to mm. get that extra value. Instead of that, he's gonna examine the specimens, the guy who just came into play and um the one that had a white counter on it. Yeah, so. and, and this is the power of, you know, Stephen passing with that four mana there is Noble has to play around the Devastating Wake and respect yeah. it, and then Steven can just decide that his other card is better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that that's just a lot of the a lot of the power Ooh. coming straight yeah, out of the green deck. That. Poof. Speaking nice. of a lot of the power, this is a beating. Yeah, it is. That's pretty good. 
Now, it's a, kind of a little tiny bit unfortunate that uh, he didn't have another support character to put the other red counter on for that energy retracer. But Noble's certainly happy to just play my guy that rolls two, two premium dice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it notably steals a red dice from Steven's red dice. Totally. Not the best in Steven's deck. Mostly he cares yeah. about the shield. Yeah. Um, but they're absolutely the best against Steven's deck. Totally. So, uh, you know, that red counter on that energy retracer is going to need to be dealt with uh, rather rather expeditiously from Steven's side of the field. Or else he's going to be in a world of hurt if, that, if Noble just untap, you know, gets to ready all of his permanence and then just activate that energy retracer that's a lot of premium dice he's gonna get to put in the field and we know steven's hand is not super rich on dice interaction totally all right so it looks like our players are readying up going into the next round here so we've got eight damage on anya and noble has discarded what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, ten cards plus like let's say five in hand five or six in hand so it's 15 so he's one third of the way through his deck Ish. Yeah, he's about a third of the way through. And, and that's good enough for Noble. Because if, if Steven happens to mill him another 15 cards before Anya dies, Noble still has 15 cards left in his deck. Yeah, he'll be okay. This is, I think, the most pivotal turn yeah, here. So I agree. we saw Steven, uh, he did feel pressured into destroying that energy retracer first action here. He goes ahead and plays his other examine the specimens to deal with the energy retracer. All three yep. damage, straight there. Mill two. Yep, mill two. And of course, now we have uh, the position where Noble doesn't really have anything going on. He has literal zero infrastructure in play. Like, yep. like he, is, he is starting as though he were starting the game. Yeah, and we can see Noble grabbing his phone here. It's worth noting he uh, used it to take yeah. note of the cards he saw in Steven's hand when he played a surveillance drone. Yeah, so he's can, not just texting his friend. Yeah, you are allowed to phone a friend to uh, write that <laughs> that things down. You can see his phone, the little notepad out there. So he's just reminding himself of the cards that he knows in Steven's hand, so he can make his best play. This Minuteman Sergeant, really good card in this matchup. It really is because it creates two bodies, especially um, because. Steven had to play his Examine the Specimens before Noble yep. made it to the Minuteman Sergeant. Both of them, actually. Yeah. Because he Both used one to kill two cent, uh, servos and then the other one to do three damage to energy tracer. So this means Steven excommunicated the uh, Minuteman Sergeant. Um, there we go. So he dealt two damage to the guy that rolls a red dice, but that means this Sentinel is sticking around. Yep. Scrappy puts a white counter on it. Now Noble has a threat. Like, I mean, when I say a threat, a single Sentinel with a white counter is like not the best, but mm. it's But certain, it can still build. Yeah, yeah. The, all Noble needs to do is slowly chip away and, I mean, hopefully kill Anya this round, but more importantly than killing Anya this round is just rolling some dice, dealing some damage, moving on, and trying not to give Steven really good opportunities to get to get him. Yeah, see, here now here's the, the somewhat pinch that Steven finds himself in in situations like this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Anya is taking damage. Mm -hmm. She will die maybe not this turn but certainly soon regardless and steven is forced to interact so there comes a point where you know you want to play those events in your hand to get those last few onion triggers because they could absolutely make the difference in whether or not you know you can sort of you know play those events that are going to mill three and you know just barely get there those one or two extra cards can really matter so maybe steven will feel pressured into committing some of his removal onto suboptimal targets and then yeah. that'll give noble an opportunity to push in some of his really heavy hitting bombs like energy retracer animus golem totally. i mean even prolific tutor seems ridiculous <laughs> on this board so that's true uh, we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. Uh, Steven, patient as always for now. We can see him yeah. just pass, 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 giving Noble all the freedom in the world to do whatever he wants, set up. Um, and Steven's just got his, his three gems ready to try and keep Anya alive. Yeah. Something's kind of neat about the way that Steven plays this Anya deck. He rolls so few dice. In fact, six around. <laughs> and that's only six because he has the scepter on, on uh, Starlet. Yeah. That he's able to just keep his dice underneath the heroes that create them. Yeah. And then when he uses them, he just puts it back. Because <laughs> it's not like he's picking up a handful of seven dice and then, you know, discarding them all. Yeah, and, and then, then they go flying else. across the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got his six dice. And that's that. <laughs> I feel like he should uh, maybe put a little signature on them. Yeah, those blank yeah, sides, totally. you know, like a little, like a little happy, maybe a little Get, like custom face. gold engraved six <laughs> dice. <laughs> oh, he's not doing. He's not rolling other dice. He's not rolling any dice. Yeah, yeah. it's perfect. Uh, but uh, of course, 
you know, the downside to this plan when you aren't rolling that many dice, you don't have that many options. Yeah. yeah and, you exactly. know, he's really suffering from that right now. He's just pass, pass, I mean, pass, pass. He's and fine. His options are all in his hand. His options are all the events in his hand. It's true. It's true. It, but, you know, Noble has a lot of options in his hand and a lot of options in the dice, you know? Two, three, four, five. Steven has like seven cards in hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a removal. He's, he's, oh, really... he's certainly got a removal spell. The question is, which one does he play this turn? Yeah. You know, he's only got three gems. You know, odds are, you know, maybe that's two removal spells if he's got like an excommunicatus and an ox dies. Mm -hmm. But more than likely, it's probably just one. Yeah. You know, so we know he has engulfing stones mm -hmm. in his hand, mm -hmm. right? We saw those earlier. I think two copies even. Uh, so that's something that he's certainly representing right now. Uh, on top of that, you know, Noble's just trying to find the best way to apply pressure and force Steven to do something. And it looks like he has. And sure enough, here comes. Uh, was uh, that, what is was that? that an oxidase or a, That's a dedicated dip diplomatic, diplomatic meeting? Yeah, it's yeah. A diplomatic. I think it's a diplomatic meeting as well. Yeah. Okay, okay so, so Steven's going to reroll Noble's green dice, and it hits two, two damage, two damage again. Nice. Back here. Definitely <laughs> not what Steven wanted. Yeah. Not. Definitely not. See, and then just blank one or the other, yeah. Blank it and get it out of there. So, unfortunately, the diplomatic being basically ends up only removing two dice this time instead of the three that it sometimes is able to when you get that nice roll. But, yep. of course, uh, no such luck this time. Noble, I'm going to go ahead and resolve Steve. some of his black dice. And then Steven's Steven? down to a single green gem, which could be a witch fire. Could be, yeah. Remember. yeah. And uh, I don't think we've actually brought up witch fire yet in this stream. You know what I haven't mentioned and should have mentioned mm -hmm. a long time ago? If you go to mountbakergames.com, there's a gallery of all the cards. Yeah. And anything we say, you can just go look up and like you can look up all the blue and green cards and just you know skin through all of them and see That's what... A great idea. Yeah. Should have mentioned that a long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's going to be very exciting to see if Steven does have this Witchfire here because it could, be very, it could play a real big game. It can deal with that Sentinel token there that Noble has. And obviously... Which fire without the resources or dice to be able to swiftly do something afterwards is not ideal, but you know, when it's gotta go, it's gotta go. And, ooh, Noble yeah. takes the blue dice away Neat. from Steven with the energy retracer there, those three topaz mines. I'm telling you, if, if y'all are playing Manifold, you're gonna start to know what three topaz <laughs> mines mean. Okay? You, you know what one emerald mine can't do anything about? Yes. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, which fire still kills the Sentinel. But, so uh, here we have. Looks like he doesn't have it. Noble nope, doesn't have it. Stealing Steven's blue dice just to prevent the shield, I think. Well, just because it's, it's good. Also good, but I, <laughs> yeah. he stole the blue dice instead of the yellow dice. I mean, yeah. I think the I think he stole the blue dice to stop Steven from being I'm able sure to shield. I'm sure that is also part of it. Yeah, yeah, as part of his aggressive plan. It looks like Steven was able to roll two shield, two rend. Rend is the uh, disc your opponent discards two cards effect. Yes. Uh, which is good. Which is good here. Super good for Steven. Uh, rending your opponent's hand... Uh, is one of the best ways to ensure that you actually have enough removal to deal with all of your yes, problems. Yes, absolutely. Um, so that Scepter of Hindrance really paying off here. That you can see why he's uh, decided to include that as one of his very few engine cards yep. um, in this deck. Noble, slapping two shield down, one on Energy Retracer, one on the Sentinel token yeah, with a course. white and blue counter on yeah, it. That Sentinel no is No reason the... to shield the principles. Oh, the absolutely heroes, not. Excuse me. Yeah, they used to be. In case anyone's wondering, they uh, for a most of the time during development they were called print, we called them principal characters, and we changed that very late to heroes. Yeah. Um. And Alex was a part of the dev team <laughs> way back when. Way back Alex when. was like, uh, I I brought this. I was I like was like, hey friends, you should come <laughs> and play this new game. And we sat down and played the first printed version. I'm pretty sure you were there that day. I was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the and very so first iteration. it was many years of calling them principles it's, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to. Memory. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know about the the saying, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. So yeah, I'll probably be calling them principles on accident <laughs> until the day I die. But yeah. hey, regardless, it's incredible to see how far this manifold has come. I mean, I we're five. talking about. So I need a two, I think. Yeah, oof, <laughs> that is a problem. But she did survive yep, this turn. She did survive, which is huge. And sorry um, to cut you off. But. No, you're good. But, you know, kind of to mention what I was saying, it's really just a testament to how hard people, you and Brad and a lot of people behind the scenes have worked to get the game yeah. to the point where it's at now where we can actually be streaming it and sort of celebrating it and talking about it. And the game's good, The game's too. awesome. It's so much fun. <laughs> so if you're interested in, in Manifold in any way, please check out mountbakergames.com. You know, there's a whole lot of interesting articles yep. and things like that. There's lore. 
Uh, there's all the cards. Yeah, everything. we're working on writing more story story things as well as uh, you know like notes. We're gonna write a tournament report about this tournament and what the metagame looks like and all that. Yeah, so there's a bunch of game days up here in Bellingham, and we're moving down to Seattle to to add some events down there. Yeah. So if you're interested in yeah. uh, you know kind of dipping your feet in, highly recommend checking out Manifold. But regardless, back to this grand yeah, finals yeah, yeah. match, we have officially reached the point in the game where both players have a lot of gems available to them. Yes. Um, so this is where Steven's deck really starts to be kind of a, a problem, in my opinion. When, you know, you have not nearly as many cards in your hand as you once did, your opponent has a whole lot of gems to be able to answer whatever you're playing, and Anya is still alive. So this Anya needs to die and fast if yeah. I'm in Noble Seed. I am Absolutely. horrified of this Anya. Absolutely. Every single card that Steven plays, and this is kind of the part that I was alluding to last turn where Steven might be feeling a little bit pressured to just play cards in his hand for slightly less value because he, one, has enough gems, mm -hmm. and two, mm -hmm. kind of might just really need these Anya triggers yes. to be able to win the game. Yeah, he wants, I think he wants this round to get as many triggers off Anya as humanly possible. And hopefully that doesn't mean, like, losing a bunch of board state. Because yeah. he, he really doesn't want to lose, right? He still needs to control the board. Yeah, I think we could see Steven but. make uh, a potentially aggressive line here to attempt to win the game as opposed to not lose the game. Yes. Classic, yes. classic exactly. uh, concept that gets talked about in a lot of card games. It's very much applicable here. You know, if Steven decides that... Because he does have to deck his opponent, he's never going to be able to do enough damage to win, right? He Absolutely. has to deal with every yes. card. So... He, you know, you know, his deck is so built not to do damage that Starlet is here so that when you roll two damage, you can turn it into two draw. Yeah. You just don't, you're actively <laughs> getting rid of damage. So, so he can't do the damage, so he has to deck Noble out. Yeah. So we could see Steven make some what appear to be potentially aggressive or less valuable plays here and maybe hope that Noble's hand doesn't have like an Animus Golem or something yeah. that can really punish him for it. And if Noble does have a weaker holding, then, you know, he might be able to deal with that with his slightly less efficient answers that he mm -hmm. has in his hand. Maybe Noble doesn't have a whole lot of cards. Maybe he doesn't roll great dice this turn. Right. Any of those things could happen. And, you know, if Steven can mill six more cards with Anya or whatever, that might matter a lot. It starts to sound a lot more playable. Yeah. You know, there are two events in the game that uh, that make your opponent discard cards from the top of their deck, and he was playing three of each of them. One of them is landslide, which uh, makes each player discard the top three, and then its removal. And the other is search the ways, um, which makes each player discard the top three, and then you uh, you can return a he can return a card, which means he can return a search the ways or a landslide or a you know yeah. an invoke cowardice to make your opponent discard cards. And, um, and so my point is. If he gets Noble to, like, 10 cards in deck, he can use events like these to, to get, get the rest, rest of the way. way. But he can't get... Can't do 20. 20, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can yeah. do 9 pretty easy. Yeah. You could do 15, and it's harder. It's quite a bit You know? Harder. Like, but... Yeah, because, like, Search the like, Waste, getting Search the Waste, getting Search the Waste or something is a lot of cards. Yeah. And but that's so late game that it doesn't affect the board. You exactly. Know, you know, it really has to kill your opponent for yeah. it to be worth it. And you know, that's why I'm saying those, like, six cards, because the difference between 9 and 15 there is huge. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge. So we see Steven. He's beginning to try to convert here. Anya does fall. So um, yes. I would be curious to know. Perhaps we can get a confirmation from the players how many cards are left in the Yeah, I'll see if tag. I can get a good update um, on that. Yeah, let's ask our table judge here. Uh, if he could give us a count on that because it's incredibly relevant because uh, Steven, well, I believe he has not played any of his mill Oh, cards. yeah. No, he hasn't. I don't think he's played a single one. Well, they don't really impact the board much. I don't and think he's been able to. Yeah, and... there's there's no real reason for him to have played them yet, but we also saw his hand and he didn't have a lot of them. True, true. You know, and so it, like, it's possible that Steven just doesn't have access to enough yes. of these effects to be able to do it to get there anyway as well. Yeah. So uh, I think that you know, it's just going to be a really interesting spot. We're going to... looks like the players are counting their deck right now, so it's super... 17. Important. 17. 17 That's is a lot. That's too many. That's a that lot. might be too many. It's... Yeah. Steven is going to have to... Okay, so 17 means Steven needs to drag this game out for, like, a while. And... Yeah, I would say at least three turns. Minimum. At least three rounds, yeah. Probably. Or three rounds minimum. And yeah. he can do... His deck is built to do that. Absolutely built to do that. Certainly. But... Noble needs like like look at this. Steven has two gems. Noble has seven. 
Yeah. Now yeah. The, the problem, of course, Noble, I think, only has two cards in his hand. Sure, sure, sure. So, you know, that's... I mean, but he has a bunch of green dice, and he'll be rolling black dice, and they roll, like, you yeah. know. You're right, you're right, you're right. So it, it does become problematic. But, you know, if Noble's drawing cards... That is effectively sure, furthering sure, Stephen's sure, sure. game plan, that too. Obviously, it's not the path Stephen wants to be taking, yeah. right? You would much rather your opponent not have access to those cards' effects. Yeah. But, you know, it, it could be worse. If your opponent feels pressured into draw to be able to play the race with you, then that's probably a good sign for Stephen, yeah, right? You know, if your opponent is spending green dice to draw, that probably means they don't have a whole lot going on. Yes. So, um, you know, that, that could be enough. But th this is a very... Very crucial turn. If Noble doesn't have a whole lot of stuff that's really going to put Stephen far behind on board this turn, I think Stephen has a real chance of stabilizing with Agreed. his massive card advantage that he has in hand. But if Noble has a pretty good follow up, like security golem with a blue counter, yeah, that's pretty good. I think I see a. Oh no, I was very wrong. He has lots of cards in his hand. He had the full five cards in his hand at the start of this turn. I was very wrong. Great. He did not have two cards. Great. In his hand. So this is. A whole different scenario. security golem into really yo oh, security yes. golem into uh, <laughs> orchestral conductor. conductor. So wow. this is exactly the nail in the coffin that Stephen did. not Remember when you said he need uh, Noble needs to build some board state? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's he, he that's agreed. That. He agreed. <laughs> he did. And Stephen. So what do we do? He's got Stephen an oxidized, oxidized to the sentinel with the servo. Great. Yeah. The servo. Sure. And um, like yeah that. The, just the radar servo. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he definitely had to. It had counters. It on had it. a red it was, counter, roll red black. Way too scary. And a black dice from scrap. No, it didn't. No, it was just red black. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think very reasonable ox dice. Steven, I think correctly realizing that uh, any single Johnny dice that gone. goes into Noble's pool is yeah. is just matters. It so matters bad for Steven at this point. Uh, it's really he really needs to prevent every single activation that he can get. <laughs> Stop texting. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing for a hundred bucks, but it's not his time to act. So he's look. He's just, he's taking the victory lap. He's texting yeah, right. his mom to check the stream right now. <laughs> he's, he's taking the victory lap, uh, but no. Realistically, I mean th this. This was a pivotal turn. A pivotal turn, excuse me. And I think that I think this, Noble's running away with it. It went yeah. about as bad as it possibly could have if you're Steven. Absolutely, absolutely. Because Noble's just going to roll red, red, blue, blue, white, white, and Steven is doing has nothing. shield one. Yeah, Steven that's is doing like it. Absolutely nothing. And security golem is shielded, by the way, too. Yeah. yeah. So it's not even like Steven's going to have a really easy time like digging in, going first, and immediately totally. killing it. Um, yeah, so one of the big strengths of this deck of nobles that I've found, that I've, that I, I, I think I've, I've noticed, is um, that he can apply a um, very relevant amount of pressure with very little investment. Yeah. I think you notice that? Yeah, that's come up a lot. It, the amount of pressure with just, like, a uh, surveillance drone, look at your hand, put a counter on it. Yeah, and then, jo like, Jolia put a counter on it. If he yeah. wasn't playing against removal of the deck... Then he, yeah, look at so and Noble's it. So looks like that is doing the concession. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. No, he has literally actual lethal, lethal actual damage. Or like one or two off. Lethal damage wow. on that turn. Sure enough, uh, needless to say, the pivotal turn it was. And with that, Noble is Incredible. our first ever Manifold TCG Player Appreciation, appreciation Open champion. I'll get him a big belt. He, sh he deserves it. He deserves <laughs> it. He did not lose a single game all day. A full yeah, lawless record. Smacking fantastic. people down with the jolliest scrappy and making it look good while doing yeah, it, yeah, I yeah, gotta seriously. say. I have never been more horrified of surveillance drone with a white <laughs> counter on it. It's horrifying. That's <laughs> it's like, awesome. That's so much pressure out of nowhere. And yeah, I think Noble with a really, really good showing of how you can exploit tempo and pressure totally. in Manifold yep. for advantages. So if you're a card game player, you're familiar with these concepts, you like this type of thing, maybe you're played like Star Wars Destiny, or maybe you're a war game player, you play yep. a lot yep. of like dice games with that. I think a lot of these concepts really apply, you know, where totally. you're using your dice, how you're, you know, positioning is not super really a thing, but like how you're <laughs> preparing, like the positioning, it's different, but it, it exists in, in totally. Manifold. You know, totally. it's more of a, it's more of a pressure positioning, you know, yeah. like I'm going to play this thing you're gonna play this thing yeah there's, all, there's a lot of posturing and jockeying for position in terms of where you're at in the turn and who's spending gems at what time absolutely yeah and i think noble gave us a real master class in uh how to really apply pressure while maintaining gem advantages consistently and we have 
Our first champion. ever Manifold TCG Players Appreciation Champion, Noble. Say hi to people Woo! back in the booth. Back in the Woo! booth. Woo! So talk about the other, the same matchup that I talked about last. The time. same matchup yeah, last time. Yeah, you seem to have uh, done. It, you, yeah. How, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. How was it, that? it was similar. Um, this time I made the smart choice to play my continued training first because when he removed it, it left behind a counter. Yeah, that, 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 I, I that, that is a lot of dice. Yeah, it was like four dice over the, yeah. the course of the thing. And he would have given me a single activation for it, right? If he'd only yeah. had Devastating Wakes. And the moment he, he didn't have you, you were going to put another black counter on your, on your Yeah, side, and then it would have right? been twice yeah. as much, twice as good, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and, and it was just... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was kind of just play, playing stuff. Play one guy... Yeah. Put a counter on it, yep. wait for you to kill it. Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, yeah. so we've talked a little bit about uh, you know you versus Mill. We obviously just watched that in the finals against Steven, but you know maybe you want to talk a little bit about how the deck performed and felt uh, over the rest of the the event. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. you know you, I think you went undefeated. If I'm I did, yep, nice yeah. little six zero. Yeah, so a um, nice little six zero. So the deck hopefully felt pretty good. Yeah. What are your yeah. thoughts on so on I, the deck in general? Good. I played against Mill twice. I thought it had a pretty good Mill matchup. Yeah. Um, none like. of those games felt particularly close. Like I said, because. Really, it's because that deck doesn't pressure Jolia, so all of these E's are just becoming two more black dice, so it's like, yeah. it looks like Scrappy adds one dice counter, but gotcha. if you're turning it into E, it yeah. actually rolls two, Ooh, That's a good point. right? Yeah. And so you're kind of doubling the amount yeah. of effectiveness if you're consistently getting those T. That's Not neat. quite, because, you know, you no one's always yeah, yeah, yeah. but like... But still. That's the theory, right? And then I think my other matchups were against a red green deck and then three other red yellow decks red yeah. yellow was the most yellow is, probably yeah. talked about the tournament breakdown five yeah. out of i believe 10 players 50 yes. percent of the field yeah. actually came yeah. with red yellow today a lot of them on the emergent yeah, yeah. Grown. obviously yeah. red yellow won the tournament so yeah. it seems like it, <laughs> yeah very different yeah. reasonable yeah. Choice. jolia and e emergent were like the decks yeah the totally totally um and those principles are very nice. cool and yeah. um so i played against a lot of aggressive decks i think i played against two e emergent decks um, and the trick, I think one of the, the biggest and easiest things to level up your Manifold game is is figuring out which principle to kill first. Hero. Hero, hero. I always say principle. We, we talked about, talk about it. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I always say principle. But yeah, um, yeah which hero to kill to defeat first. And, um, you know, in this matchup, it's obviously Anya because, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, usually you, you'd want to attack the thing that rolls more dice, but Anya is the thing that's actually going to end the game. Yeah. So those games would have been a lot closer if Anya had lived Absolutely. until the end, and then I would have gotten milled another 10, 12 cards, and then I have like three, four cards in my deck, and it starts to get really dicey. And we were, no, we, were t we were talking about how when Anya dies, immediately check the number of cards in your deck, and that will correspond to how well you're doing, right? Yeah, totally. If you have 20 cards left, you're doing fine. If you have five cards yeah. left, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. and so and, like, you know. a big thing with this deck is like trying to figure out when you need to be aggressive, and when you need to... Um, and when, like, so when you're trying to just roll a bunch of dice and discard aggressively to deal as much damage as, as you can, because in against the emergent decks and the Chrissy deck that I played against on camera, um, with the attachment decks, it's really important to, to get that first principle defeated because yeah. then you, they lose all of the gems that they put into their attachments mm -hmm. um, and lose a bunch of their dice and pressure because totally. um, you can convert those th that damage into an advantage of being able to roll more dice than your opponent and then from there it kind of snowballs right yeah absolutely so i would say so obviously you had a very successful tournament yep. and you said you had a pretty good mill matchup but i have to ask you a question what do you think would be maybe a deck that your deck would not be super well positioned to fight against or what, what do you think maybe after playing the deck for this long you had problems with what are you scared of yeah, yeah so the problem with if that mill deck had rama instead of instead of Starlet, Starlet for example. So mm -hmm. some some green principle that puts some pressure on me, I think I would be in a lot of trouble. If my opponent was resolving ritual circles and I wasn't answering them and yeah. killing my principles, yeah. I would be in a lot of trouble if, if they were trying to hit me back at all. Because then when I'm playing this really cagey game, you know, and then I tap out, they answer stuff, then they can punish me, right? Yeah. They can they can yeah. start hitting me for damage if they had some way to go over the top. But the problem was it just so since, since I'm not under pressure and you know, they, my cards demand answers, and my answer to is my principles roll enough dice usually to get through onion in a couple turns. Yeah. As long as I get another random dice here or there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was it was really impressive to me how you forced Steven to use diplomatic meeting to hit your like random mm -hmm. one damage black dice, and yeah. he actually had to. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. getting I, him in that in that 
position, yeah. I think is really good for your for the yeah. way that you're able to do that. Totally. Yeah. So needless to say, I was very impressed with the gameplay coming out of you, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. On your first place uh, victory, you were the first ever Manifold TCG Players Appreciation Champion. So uh, you know, plaques yeah. in the mail, and yeah. hundred dollars fresh at Benjamin has awesome. been. Hotly delivered, so yeah. you know, spend uh, it on some some manifold. Goods. Yeah, just go <laughs> yeah. buy some singles. <laughs> uh, so, without further ado, I want to yeah. really thank every single one of you out there that stopped by and checked out the stream. Whether you're here now, whether you stopped by and watched a certain round, whether you're mm -hmm. watching some of the vods on YouTube later. Yeah, we're going to be putting so these all much. up as individual vods. Yes, in we will be. So, yeah. uh, you know, thank you so much for checking out manifold, experiencing the tournament with us. You know, giving it a look, and mm -hmm. uh, we hope you liked what you saw. And we're excited to bring a lot more manifold. So keep your eyes peeled. Uh, yeah. If you're interested in purchasing Manifold or being able to play it yourself, there's actually a promotion yeah, right. going on right now. Should have brought this up earlier, probably. Yes, we absolutely probably should have brought it up during the Grand Finals, but you know, maybe we'll add a little thing. Regardless, if you're watching now, this is a little bonus for you, there's a promotion. If you could use promo code AGUS25 when ordering an Angel copy set of Manifold, which for those of you who don't know, is a full copy of the game, right? Yeah, it's, so the, the, the thing to buy right, the thing you can buy right now is Three of every card, one of every hero, all the tokens and dice and everything you'll need to play as one box. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's basically like a TCG player's uh, best friend. Yeah. Instead of having to open packs and hope you yep. get the cards you need, you just guarantee get everything, and not just the ones you want. You get everything. So in yeah. two weeks, when you're like, man, I really need to be playing an extra support structure removal card. Yeah. Guess what? You can just go into the box and have it. It's awesome. So anyway, if you use promo code Agus25 at checkout, you get fifty dollars off your order of an angel copy of Manifold. So yep. and that'll be on MountBakerGames.com. MountBakerGames.com. And That's of course. Great. I, if you if you're watching Aegis' stream, you can contact them. They'll help you figure it out, or yeah, come in, or call it, you know, whatever. And if you're watching the vod yeah. on YouTube, there will be a link in the description Absolutely. below. So yes. go ahead and check that out. Check out Mount Baker Games. Check out Manifold. Share it with your friends. Yep. You know, we'll be doing another one of these in a couple months. Uh, we'll be posting about that on Discord, Facebook. Uh, yeah, and variety places, and website. Maybe show up, you know. Yeah, we had a ten dollar entry fee, and we gave out three hundred dollars in cash today. Cash. Yeah. So mm -hmm. show up. Cash. I like cash. Do you like yeah, cash? I like love cash. cash. Yeah, almost as much as I like manifold. We also gave out cool promos. You might have noticed that some of the cards we pulled up had different art than what were in play. That's because everyone who came got two foil promo heroes. That are right now one of exclusive. one for each of they're exclusive. Highly yeah. exclusive. Any any of these uh, player appreciation opens are going to have uh, promotional foils that you can get. And currently, the plan as of the current plan, that's the only place you can get them. Yeah. So if you really like playing a hero, uh, that you should come by and, and get your get your promos. Yeah. So I think uh, that basically it, wraps yeah. it up. So I think from. All of us on the stream, me, Adam, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. A huge shout out to the entire production booth that mm -hmm. helped us run this. We had multiple people behind the camera. We had, uh, obviously, the wonderful group who spent years developing <laughs> Manifold to actually get yeah. it to the spot where we can share it with people. What an amazing experience. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'm really excited to see you all yeah. when we're back. We'll, we'll see you open. next time.